Hello, beautiful souls. It's Kat from Elevate, my channel where we talk about recovering from toxic relationships and regaining self-love and self-esteem. Today's topic is going to be, they don't have the power, you do. And it's about power in relationships and this concept of after a toxic relationship or any relationship breakup, there's this idea of power. Who has the power? Was it the person who dumped the other person or wasn't it? And I'd like to get into that concept today. But before I do, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe if you'd like to get more videos about these topics to regain your self-esteem and your confidence and heal or start a healing journey if you haven't started yet. Also, please like this video. It definitely helps get this out to more people. So getting into the topic today, the concept of power in relationships. What is power in relationships? So if you look in the dictionary and as a noun, power is defined as the ability to do something or act in a particular way, especially as a faculty or quality, or the capacity or ability to direct or influence the behavior of others or the course of events. As in example, she had me under her power. So if we're using the word power within relationships, we're likely referring to the second definition of power here, the capacity or ability to direct or influence the behavior of others or direct the course of events. Um, so if we're using the word power, but is power real or more of a fluid concept, which doesn't necessarily exist except in perception? It can be concrete in some ways, but it, it can also mostly be perception. So there's a lot of overlap in these two concepts and a lot of confusion as well. I really want to dive deep into this to talk about power because I think a lot of women who have been in a toxic relationship feel like the toxic person got away with their abuse, that the toxic person has all the power because maybe the toxic person, for instance, if it was a narcissist, went through the typical cycle of putting you on a pedestal and then slowly devaluing you and discarding you. And it may feel that they have all the power because they've left you, they've abandoned you, they've thrown you away like trash. And I think a lot of women get hung up on this concept of he has the power because he did this to me. But it's really all... Um, abstract. This is like a power in in the the dynamic of power or power plays. It's all perception, right? So technically, if you really think about it, the power can lie with anyone. It's not it's not like um it's not a concrete definite idea that they have the power because they left you. It's all in how you look at it. It's all in your perception. They may perceive that they have the power. And I think that us, let's say, looking at that person, knowing that they perceive that they have the power might be what is really getting to us or really bothers a woman who has gone through this ordeal. However, I feel like that's more ego. That's that's a woman letting her ego kind of run the show because it doesn't really matter what this person thinks. This abusive person, this toxic person, you know, whether they had a narcissistic personality disorder or they were just selfish, maybe they were just a selfish, immature person, whatever it was, it doesn't really matter at this point how they see you, how they perceive the situation, how they, you know, look at it. Maybe they think they're winning. Maybe they think they got the, the best of you. Maybe they think they are, um, they won up to you, but it doesn't really matter because for your life, what matters is what you think. What matters is how you handle things. This person is gone, right? This, this toxic person is gone. And it may really bother you deep inside thinking about how they perceive you. But at the end of the day, your power is in having a different perception, right? It's this person has a distorted view of the world, 
this other person, this toxic person. And because they have a distorted view of the world, you can't expect them to have an accurate view of you. It's just not going to happen because they just don't see things uh, as a non-toxic or more neurotypical person would. So, you know, you can't expect someone with a personality disorder or untreated mental illness to see the world or to see you as you really are. And I, this, I know hang, gets a lot of people hung up. A lot of people are hung up on this concept of, you know, the, they got away with it. The toxic abuser just, you know, went on to the next person. They look happy on social media. They look happy in their life. And how come I'm just left and I've been thrown away like trash? And how come they look like they're winning and they've done so much better than me? This is very common. I hear this from a lot of women. And again, it's it's like people will say when someone breaks up with another person or like let's say someone, someone dumps you. And a friend, a well-meaning friend might say to you, don't let him have the power because you're upset. Let's say you're sad, you're upset. Don't let him have the power is often what people will say, or he's not worth it. Now, you know, the I, the concept of this is well-meaning, but the truth is we have to grieve and we have to feel pain and we have to be sad. And it's not letting someone else have any power over us by us being sad because it's a normal part of being hurt and being um broken by someone who psychologically and emotionally abused you or maybe even physically it's a normal reaction to those things to feel sad to feel grief to feel pain so you're not giving anyone power by feeling those things and i think this is like a huge mistaken um like saying that people will say to people that are grieving from a breakup because there's this concept out there too that you know you just have to just get over it there are more fish in the sea just you know go back out there and get over it it's true that you want to be able to move past the situation but you can't just repress and deny these natural feelings of rejection and pain that you feel when when you're You've been involved with someone who then completely treats you like you're a piece of trash. You know, it's it's not a normal kind of relationship. The pain is so much deeper and the, 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 the shock of it. And I think even the surprise and shock of it when you're dropped from the pedestal or um, and start be, being devalued, I think it's so much more dramatic because it's such a... It's a, such a black and white scenario. You're literally dealing with opposite. It's almost as if the person you're with is a different person. So I think it's normal to have some level of pain and grief and heartbreak. And I think that's normal. And I think if you repress those things and you just tell yourself, I'm not going to give him the power to make me feel this way, then you're really focusing on the wrong thing, let's say. He, he, this person who abused you is no longer here. They no longer exist in your life. And that means they don't have any power over you. They never really did. You always had your own power, although you may have been very submissive and maybe you were codependent and you really fixated on this other person. During the healing process, you want to bring that focus back to yourself and you want to make sure that you switch that focus every time you're thinking about them, them getting the best of you, them having the power, them living their best life and it looks like they've moved on without a second thought of you. You want to switch your focus off of them and you want to put your focus back onto you your life, your power, and what what do you have the power to do, which is only to change yourself. We can only change ourselves. We can only work on ourselves. We can't change other people. I know we, we try, 
we've tried, and I'm sure in a relationship like this, you tried to make it work and, and help this person as best you could to grow or emotionally um, mature, mature, maybe to understand that you they were hurting you. You tried to talk to them and tried to make things work. But with a toxic person who has no interest in growing or changing, you can't build a healthy relationship or maintain a healthy relationship. It's just impossible. So let's talk more about power. Like I I wrote some examples down, like a man doesn't allow his wife to work and he holds all of the financial power in the relationship because she doesn't have any money of her own. We call this a woman giving up her power. She's submissive, submitting to her husband's decisions. But does this make her powerless? Financially, yes, but she is complicit in turning over her power to him. So she technically still has personal power, personal agency to make decisions, but she is complicit in turning over her power to him in a financial way because now he he has the money and she has to ask him for anything that she needs. Another example is a woman threatens to expose her boyfriend's infidelities to friends and family if he doesn't stop cheating. We might say she has the power to control his behavior by holding his secret over his head. Does this mean she's got all the power? It doesn't because it, it's essentially that this man can leave her and make that choice. And then she's by herself. They will separate. They will go and have their separate lives. And then she has no power. So a lot of power is just conceptual. And I feel like people have to understand that once you're broken up or a relationship ends, there is no more power playing. And and even in the relationship, there's this, even if you see an imbalance of power, the person who's on the lower end, let's say, who's who seems to be with less power always has the personal power to make a change to either, if they can't change that relationship, they have the power to get out of that relationship. So there's always... Um, an ability for the power to to swiftly change in any situation. And that's why I say power is like a a concept, an abstract concept more than anything concrete. I feel like a lot of women get stuck in this because they feel helpless. They feel hopeless about the future. They feel stuck in a toxic relationship and they feel that they don't have any power. But in effect, they do without realizing it. You know, when there's a breakup, like I said, um, when someone says, don't give him so much power, if someone's dumped you and you're sad about it, or you're feeling grief and, and you're feeling rejection, what exactly are they talking about? Like, think about that. Is ha- is the power really given or is power really taken? How are we giving away our power to our exes or toxic people? I don't believe that feeling pain and feeling that grief is giving your power away. I do believe in some situations when you're with the person, you may be giving some power away, but it's like, again, it's all in our minds. This is all just a perception. So it's, it's easy to change. It's, it's malleable. It's not concrete. So you have, you have the ability to change any, any of this kind of power play. Uh, People perceive that the one who hurts less or isn't affected as much is the one with more power in a situation. But is this really true? Are you really winning a conceptual power struggle with an ex when you don't even see that person anymore? How do you give or take something that is purely an abstract perception? Power is not real. It is an abstract perception. So fixating on this idea of the other person having power over you is fixating on something that doesn't actually exist. I know some people get very hung up on this idea, as I mentioned. However, we aren't giving any more power due to us feeling sadness, grief, or heartbreak. These are natural human emotions that we need to feel and process before moving on with our lives. They have nothing to do with power. 
closely related to this difference is the feeling of powerlessness and being powerless. So if you are being powerless, that's one thing. And feeling powerless is separate. So I think just because you've allowed yourself to get into a situation where you feel you lose your power doesn't necessarily mean you are actually powerless. You are resigning to that feeling, but it doesn't mean that it's true. Ultimately, we realize that power in romantic relationships is just a concept, right? It's just your perception or their perception. Power is all in your mind. When you give someone your power or they take it, quotes, it's them having the upper hand in dictating how things play out according to what they want. But you really aren't giving anything and they're not taking anything solid from you. It's all about how you perceive the situation. We can look at power as having agency, an ability to make your own decisions for yourself or not. Like if you're giving it away, you're giving away the power to make your own decisions. So let's talk about another example. A guy breaks up with you suddenly out of the blue. You're, you're surprised, you're shocked without any real explanation and he won't speak to you afterwards, although you'd been dating for a while and he seemed happy. You try to reach him by phone, but your calls go unanswered. You send him texts asking him why this happened, and you're truly shocked and hurt by it all. He has the power to control the situation by continuing to ignore you, but he does not actually have any power over you. In fact, he doesn't even exist anymore in your world. It's like, poof, he's gone. So how does he have any power? He doesn't, unless you continue to engage in the situation. You're hurting because you're a normal human being with a heart who trusted this man and you were vulnerable with him. It's not giving him power by feeling that pain and sadness over the breakup. It's the normal course of grief that goes hand in hand with heartbreak. Cognitive reframing techniques are helpful in these situations because they're based upon changing your perception. Power between two people in an intimate relationship is based on perception. For instance, the guy who ignores you might feel very powerful and in control when he does this, and he may believe that he's got the power in this situation. And yet, if you stop trying to contact him, what power does he really have? Any power that he seemingly had has now evaporated as the abstract concept of the upper hand now disappears. I know that people will focus on this idea and that the other person got the last word or the other person humiliated them or made them feel inferior. And then they think the other person has the power because that's the way the situation ended. However, these are just symptoms of you feeling powerless, but in reality, you are not without power and they do not have more power than you because of the way that things ended. Concepts. The concept of power is meaningless in intimate relationships. We all hold personal power, which we can and should focus on after a breakup. We all have agency, the ability to choose to make a new life, better decisions, and leave toxic people behind. That is our power. Your ex is gone. The toxic relationship is over. Now you have the power and the, the choices available to you to change your life, to heal, and to find healthier relationships in the future. So concrete power is ultimately about making choices and changes. However, these are for ourselves. Your toxic ex doesn't hold all the cards. Even if they left you, ignored you, and painted you as a bad person, you still haven't lost your personal power. You are still you, broken a bit, and maybe healing, but you will heal into a whole improved person while they're just repeating their toxic relationship patterns with the next woman after you. So please understand that it's, it's dangerous to get caught up in this trap of thinking because they ended it, it was on their terms or they had the last word and you felt like you were rejected, abandoned, you know, discarded. 
it's a trap to think that that means they have the power. They don't have any power over you. They are gone. They are non-existent in your world now. And all you can focus on is yourself and your, you know, friends and family around you and build, rebuilding a new life. But at this point in time, your main focus should be healing and moving on and letting go. Because I truly believe that karma is real. And I believe that despite the fact that these people may look on social media or to other people that they're having a great life, ultimately, karma will do its job. And I, I believe that 100%, I won't have anything to do with it. I won't go after people for revenge. But I know that ultimately, they get what they deserve. At the end of the day, nobody can put bad energy and hurt other people and go around doing all these things and not get it back at some point. It's just, I just don't believe that's how the universe works. I just believe that what goes around comes around. And if you put bad energy and, and you do horrible things to people, abusive things, you will pay the price later on. And that's why I don't do that to people. That's why I try to live my life and putting out as best energy as I can. That doesn't mean that I don't have conflicts with people because you'll, you know, when you have boundaries, you will have conflicts with people, but that's not bad intention. That's not, you know, a bad type of energy. When you have boundaries and you have conflicts, it's because you're protecting yourself. So it's, it's not about uh, anything bad. It's just that may cause conflict, especially with toxic people. You know, when you, when you uphold your boundaries or you stand up for yourself, they really don't like that. So if you start demanding respect or saying, why are you disrespecting me? Why are you uh, saying these things or acting in a way that's, that's abusive or disrespectful, you're going to have conflict with these people, but that doesn't mean you're bad. That's, that's not you being a bad person. Although they may try to convince you of that and make it turn it around. So they make it seem like it's your fault. That's very common. Your ex doesn't have the power just because you're heartbroken, just because you're in pain, you're normal. And that's a normal, normal reaction to someone that you trusted and loved and you were vulnerable with who now has thrown you out like yesterday's trash. So don't be, don't beat yourself up. Don't think they have the power and, and that they're winning. Don't even concern yourself with these things. Just turn your focus back to you. You know, start your daily routines. I am big, I'm big on daily routines, morning and night routines to keep yourself in uh, on the healing journey and getting better and better each day. If you need more help, I'm available for private coaching now. I just started my private coaching practice and you can email me cat at catloretta.com if you're interested. Also, I have, if you don't uh, have the funds for private coaching, uh, a little more economic choice is my course, which is the Toxic Heartbreak Remedy course. It's an online course, self-paced. You take it at, at your leisure and that will help you to understand all of the techniques and behavioral changes and patterns that you can shift in my course to be able to heal from a toxic relationship heartbreak. So take a look at that also on my website at catloretta.com. Anyway, again, I hope, I hope this helped you and please subscribe if you haven't already.